automation. And if you're one of those uh, lucky ones who saw Jeremy's presentation on Is Cloud Right For Me, you would have been exposed to automation for Jira. And so if you haven't seen it, like Robin said, you know, go to the Bloom Tech webpage, check out his recording. But um, automation is probably one of the best ways to gain value from Jira. And this is really where all of the magic happens. And there's two automation engines. So the first one is just uh, the native automation to all service desk projects. And then the second one is the more fancy one, which Atlassian provide to all projects, not just service desk ones, called automation for Jira. So we're gonna take a look at some of these rules now to help get the most out of your service desk. Both of these automation engines use the when, if, then logic. Um, it's just that automation for Jira will give you way more when triggers, a lot more if statements, and then tons of then actions. And what you can do with automation is really unlimited. So we're gonna go through these five rules that you can all start using today to stop that repetitive work and make Jira Service Desk work for you. And the first one is around an ITIL process. Tickets are resolved and should only be closed when the customer has confirmed that the issue is fixed. In reality, this is kind of a boring, tedious task, uh, admin job actually, uh, following up with customers and trying to confirm if it is resolved or not. So let's automate it away and then also have a process that allows our customers to reopen issues um, that have been resolved if they said, you know what, this has not been fixed. So the first thing that we've done here is updated our uh, resolve customer notification. And we've just said, you know, the standard uh, assignee has resolved this as the resolution code. We've put in this little text saying, hey, the ticket will remain resolved for the next three business days. Now, we've chosen three, you can choose five or 10, or however many you want. Uh, and then if you want to reopen this ticket, we've made it easy. Just reply with the word reopen, don't call the service desk, right? And so if the customer goes, yep, yeah, um, I want to reopen this, I'm gonna reply to that email just with the word reopen. Uh, or maybe some other text reopen because blah, 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 blah. Um, that reply would automatically get added as a comment to my Jira issue. And because the automation rule, which is over here, is looking for when comments are added, it will then be triggered. And so it will say here, if a comment is added or when a comment is added, if the status is resolved, the customer, is, uh, the comment is public, the customer who, or the person who raises the request or the comment who adds the comment is a customer, and if it's a primary action and it contains the word reopen, then do something and just run the reopen transition so that our ticket now moves from resolve back to in progress. Else if, if you waited too long and the issue is closed with all of the same sort of criteria beside it, then what do we do? Well, we let the customer know, hey, the issue is now closed. It cannot be reopened. And here's a link to our portal to create a new ticket. So, um, one of the ways that you can go about just making sure that um, the, the follow-up and confirmation is all automatic and you don't have to do this as a service desk. Now, keeping in line with those boring repetitive tasks, let's automate away some of those uh, follow-ups that you might have to do as a service desk agent. So um, tickets that are waiting for a customer response and if they don't reply, well, you could automatically resolve those issues. So stop spending the time again or that admin effort on following with customers who don't get back to you and let your service desk agents work on those technical issues in the backlog, the stuff that they actually want to work on, why they started working uh, within IT. So this one over here um, called, this one's automation for Jira. It looks slightly different from our other automation rule. And this is saying on a scheduled basis and the at 9 a.m. every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if my ticket is in the waiting for customer status and it has not been updated in five days, then do the following. The first one is I have a field over here that says follow up count. So it's just incremented by one. And then recheck the data so that if my follow up count is equal to one, add this comment to the ticket. Hi, uh, first name of the, the reporter. That's essentially what this means. Uh, we haven't heard back from you in five days, so we're following up. You know, if we don't hear back from you, we'll follow up again. Now, five days will pass again. Our automation rule will run and see, hey, it's been five days since the person's updated it. Um, increment this count here, so now it's no longer one, but it's count two. And then we'd, if we were to look down further and further on our rule, it would say follow up count equals two. Hey, it's been 10 days, we're following up again. If you don't get back to us in five more days, we are going to resolve this issue. Uh, and then follow up count three happens and we tell them, hey, we're closing out, or we're resolving this issue. Uh, if it is, if it does need to be reopened, reply to the ticket with the word reopen, 
uh, and you have three businesses to do this. You can probably see a little bit of a theme here uh, with these automations around stopping those heavy admin tasks, but here's another one that we could automate away. Uh, so here we're keeping the service desk out of the approval follow-ups so that they can continue working on those technical and troubleshooting pieces of work that they enjoy. And so with this rule, instead of adding a comment to the ticket, like we saw in the previous one, what we're gonna do is send an email to the approver. So um, this is just saying in my project, if the status is equal waiting for approval, and it has not been updated in five days at 10 a.m. every day, here's what I want you to do. Send an email to the approver. And if I break it up, this is what it looks like over here. So who do I send it to? The approvers. Hey, um, this issue with the issue key is waiting for your approval. And then again, hi, you know, approver. Uh, the request by the person who raised it is waiting for your approval before it can be action. Here's some details about it. This is just uh, because this content here can be written in HTML. This is just a fancy way to, or HTML to basically say, here's the link to it. Um, and if you want, here's all of my or your outstanding approval requests. So not just this ticket, I'll show you all of the things that you need to approve. If you don't get back to me, we'll follow up on you in five business days. So we'll actually pick, this will say the specific date, uh, five business days from now. So we're sending an approval here. And if ever you have used automation for Jira for sending emails, um, Little quick tip down here, if you click on the more options, there is a from email that you could change it to. So you could say, um, when the person receives the email, they it could specifically say what uh, an email address. And if you don't touch it, by default, it will be whatever, or whoever owns the rule, whoever created the rule. So it would have been me, but I've just changed it to maybe be jira at glintech.com, follow-ups, jira at glintech.com. And the second thing, because this is an email going out, and um, we've sent a little message over here to the person, who actually raised the request, letting them know that we have done a follow-up and we will follow up again in five days. So again, service desk out of this process completely and they will only see the ticket once it gets approved and goes into their queue. Now, most service desks also receive repetitive tickets. Password resets is probably one of the most common and famous examples. And you can probably see where I'm going here again, but, um, Filling out all those details around those repetitive requests, like a password reset, what's its category, what's its urgency, what's its impact, who's the assignee, can be monotonous, can be boring administrative work. So set up an automation rule that allows you to automatically add the required information so that the support team does not need to fill it out. And how would you do this? Well, I've created a field, either on my create or edit screen or both, that is just called issue template. And because in my organization, we only have three uh, very repetitive types of requests, AD password resets, VPN access, and email and phone. I've included those there. You're probably gonna have a lot more. So we have this field on our ticket and when a value gets placed into either one of these, it triggers our automation rule. So over here, when the value changes for issue template, Right, so this field called issue template, if it matches AD password reset, then do these things. Change the urgency, the impact, fill out the category, maybe even change the summary so uh, it pulls in the reporter's name into there and assign it to the person who, they said who triggered the event, the person who changed that value for issue template. Uh, because these are always standard, we've also said not most AD password resets quite quick, uh, automatically resolve that ticket too. And then we have our other if statements and our other business logic for those common requests around what fields actually need to be filled out. Maybe it gets escalated to a particular team with specific data, maybe the subtasks that need to be created. So all of these different ways that you could use your issue templates. And to give you another idea on how powerful automations can be and how they can work together, if you're missing some inspiration, here's another one, which is creating a Jira service desk or a Jira project automatically. And this would be especially useful if you're in a large organization and you receive a lot of these types of requests. And we've also incorporated our approval process in this one because that was some of the business logic that we had. So uh, we have our request in the portal uh, where a user can go in and fill out the project name, the specific key, which has to be, be in uppercase and no spaces a specific project type, is it a Kanban project, a Scrum project, a business project, uh, project description, and a URL. 
Um, we might want to have another one for what is your business logic or business justification for this year project, whatever you really want. So once they fill this out and click the create button, a couple things will happen. We have an automation that pulls in our a business logic. These are the requests that require approval. And again, we don't need the service desk to uh, say, hey, this requires approval, let me go and seek it. We've all put that into our tool right now. So when an issue is created, if it's one of these types of requests here, and we can see our JIRA project request is one, then automatically transition it to waiting for approval. So this automatic transition, it automatically transitions to waiting for approval. In this case, we've said all of these should go to Adam over here. So Adam gets the email, he takes a look and goes, yep, this makes sense, all the information is good, I'm gonna click the approve button. And when he does that, our issue moves from waiting for approval to a new status. So we have our other automation rule over here, which is triggered when the issue goes from waiting for approval to in progress. And when this happens, if the customer request type is JIRA project request, yes it is, then do the following, right? Uh, just update the summary to make it look, look a little nicer. So create you know, Scrum Jira project, create Kanban Jira project, depending on what field the person took with this project name and then this project key. And just as an extra little check over here, we even said for the project key, uh, take the value from it, just make sure, convert everything into uppercase. If, for example, they weren't converted into uppercase. If you have a space in it, remove the space and only take the first 10 characters because that's the character limit that we have for a um, project key. Uh, what happens next is then if it does, let's just say it is a Kanban project or, uh, or a Scrum project, it'll match to one of these and a web hook. Uh, so Jira basically, um, the Jira data that we had that was filled out in the form will be posted to um, Jira's REST API and then that will create our project with all that data inside. So we include that data within this request over here. And the final result is all of those details that were filled out do create the ticket and this is where they would be placed.